This is UART premium pastel paper. Some call it sanded paper. It is typically used for painting with pastel sticks. Can you use it for watercolor pencils? I'll show you how I did it and what I learned in this experiment. I cut these down because I like working small. It doesn't take me as long. I just use a normal paper cutter like this one. Anyway, um, I'm going to show you how this works. First thing I do is I put in a grid, but I don't draw all the lines. I just draw the dots like you see here um, and on the ends. That way I don't have to race as much. But on my reference photo of this duck, I have the whole lines. And even though you don't have to, you can make the picture as big as the lines so that you know, the perspective looks the same, but that's not necessary. These squares are an inch big. So I start by drawing pretty slowly, actually, um, the duck. And then here you can see, okay, halfway through that square is the top of his back. And I'm skipping forward because this would be a long thing anyway. But there I'm drawing a wing, and again, back on the back, halfway through that square is the back. So just kind of sketch it slowly and I already did the head and, and everything else um, and the eye and the bill um, but I here I'm getting kind of the dark areas and saying okay this is a dark area and then I kind of put some water over the lines and it, it makes it darker but it, it sets the line so it's actually a little bit more permanent it'll lift off a little bit but um, largely, this kind of makes it so it doesn't move around and, and smear. Um, and then I find sometimes I forget to put paper underneath my paper, paper towel underneath my paper, so that I don't get paint on my desk. Here, I you can see that I kind of am using some of that color to paint the dark areas. Um, I'll end up going over it. Um, I do that. And, and you'll see in a minute that when you put pencil over wet paper, it really kind of blends off the paper. Or, you know, it disperses the, the color pencil. Um, so that's kind of cool. Um, rather than doing it dry and then getting it wet, you can put pencil on the wet and then it kind of spreads. And you'll see that in a second that it the color spreads out with the water a little bit. See how it kind of disperses right there. I jumped ahead, I shouldn't have, but... Um, and then here, it's drier right there, so that's just regular pencil. When I go back to that wet area, it, it, it blends out quite a bit. Um, here I'm kind of getting darker. I walked away and let some of the head dry, and so that's why it's lighter again. And you kind of have to do layers so that it looks real dark when it's wet, but it when it dries, it gets a little lighter. Um, that was kind of a bluish green, and now I'm adding a more grass green um, to his head. The the bright where the sun's on his head. I like these mallard ducks how they you can actually have a really bright green head if you get in the right light. I took this picture a long time ago. Now I'm blending the dry pencil with a brush and kind of blending that blue with the green. And a little later, I'll make the right side of his head really dark. Um, and I'm kind of going around that eye, um, a circle around the eye. Later, you'll see how you can put white um, on the eye, which is kind of cool. So here is it's getting a little bit darker. And I'm getting rid of the grids on the picture so I can see. I'm putting the yellow of the beak. I started with yellow and then later I'll add orange and even some white. And later I'll, I'll, ask, I'll also add some purple to that head for the really dark spot. Yeah, this is, I think it's an indigo actually. Um, and that'll blend out. It looks like a stark line now. Well, it kind of is in the picture, but. I'll blend it out with the brush. So I spent a lot of time on this head, and usually I do the background first, but I kind of just wanted to see if I could get that color and show you how I do stuff. Here I'm using a flat or brush to blend the line a little bit. 
get some texture. I <clears throat> um, kind of just experiment is what I do. <laughs> See, how oh, did that work? And I like that bigger brush, and I kind of try to keep it fairly dry. Even though it's a water brush and it's always kind of dripping water, it, it kind of gets dry. Here I'm doing some green on the yellow just to get the shading. Um, that kind of worked pretty good. And then I'm adding some orange for the different parts just for color. I ended up doing this for about an hour, maybe. Um, but I'd walk away and come back. Okay, so this is the best part of Santa paper. Adding white on top of dark. You don't need very much. You know, just kind of pushing and barely moving it just so it gets on there. And I'll do this a couple times because <coughs> after a while the white kind of sinks into the paper a little bit. Now I'm putting in the water. I start out with just some ultramarine blue. Um, and I wanted the waves to be dark, and you can see on the picture that some of the water is quite white. Um, and w when I put the waves in, and you see when I do with the water brush, I don't just smear it all. I, I dab it more than anything. Um, and then I let it dry so that that dark areas stay stay dark because I don't want to spread the water too much out here and then I find that once it's dry it's sort of permanent and you can go over it with other stuff um, to kind of keep the waves or the ripples I should say these aren't waves it's a pond actually it was a river I think no I don't know what it was I used some of the remaining blue of this brush on the duck itself because I thought, oh, that there's some blue hue in the in the duck. So once you get the pigment on the brush, you can use it other places, which I would pick it up here. And I'm trying to get it close to the head without touching the head. Um, and then I'm you know, bringing the color down onto the duck just because I think it adds to it. So I fiddled a lot with this, and um, yeah, it's fun to, to test. And one of the reasons I like these small ones is I can not get to spend too much time on it. Here I'm adding some yellow, actually, I think. What color is that yellow? Just some different colors to the to water, because I didn't want the water to be just completely blue. It's not yellow, it's, a, it's more of an ochre color. Um, and I wanted the bottom to be darker than the top, so that it, because it, it's that way in the picture, but light tends to go back, it gives depth to the water. Um, so I spent a lot of time adding dark to the bottom end of this, and then I'll leave the white at top, or the lighter color at top just kind of scribble back and forth just getting pigment on there I spent quite a bit of time trying to make sure that the top of the back of that duck was obvious and then with the water brush I don't want it to be too dry too wet so I dab it on the paper towel and then you can see I'm dabbing more than brushing because I kind of want to keep that those ripples of the of the lake there and I'm kind of working along the edge of the duck just to keep it get rid of the white of the paper um, and even though I'm kind of moving on to the green head it'll stay put mostly um, I didn't want to spend too much put too much water it because it will lift off and I'll show you that later um, here you'll see in a minute that I got that too too blue so I'm adding some lightness back in to get some some ripples
ripples back, which I think is another cool thing where you can do light on top of dark. So I think I'm done with the water now. Now I'm putting some yellow ochre on the duck um, along the wings, and I just used a lot of different colors. Um, so I kind of did a first layer of just this yellow ochre. And then I'm putting a, I think it's an Indian red um, for the darker areas. And ultimately I'm going to end up having just a chocolate brown um, for the, the dark areas of the duck. And I haven't done any white for the neck, that neck ring. And I'll show you that later. That's kind of cool. Um, here I'm doing a lighter brown. Um, and then some gray for the gray feathers. Um, this doesn't look like it's showing up too much, but this is a cool part. So I use my finger to spread out the color while it's dry. Um, and I've actually used a brush before, a dry brush. Uh, but I figured I'd just use a finger because I had a finger handy. <laughs> but I'm just pushing dry pigment around. None of it's wet at this moment. So you can see how it spread. And then I'll wet it after I spread it out and it'll make it darker temporarily um, while it's going. So I probably too spent too much time showing you different parts and not enough time showing some parts, but I like to just try to make the feather texture with this brush. Um, so I go pretty slow, to be honest. And later I'll show you how some of this I'll lift back off, so some of this color, because it's in some areas getting too dark but I wanted the top of this duck to be darker and the underside of that wing and then I when I get too much pigment going I'll dab it off on the paper towel like I just did there and then I'll go back and do the their lighter areas um, you don't have a water brush so you can just dip the water but Make sure you don't get too uh, too wet, or it'll just start making the the watercolor too runny. It's like I'm falling off the edge here, but I'll straighten it up in a little bit. There you go. <laughs> this is the first time I've ever filmed myself doing this, so we'll see how if I do this again. Okay, so here is where I'm going to start lifting color because I got that too too dark in here. So I'm I'm brushing it with a clean clean brush and then I'm wiping it off on the thing, and so you can kind of see it getting lighter. So, um, it's removing the pigment, and I'll do it even more on the the chest, the breast of the duck here in a second. Yeah, right here. So, getting it quite wet, um, and I can even squeeze that bottle and it gets some wet. And you can see that it's lifting up, but I'm going to use a paper, some of the paper towels to lift it up even more. Um, you just dab it and then see how much it lifts it up. So once I lift the pigment and get back to a, a lighter color, I'll blend in those edges a little bit. Just to kind of get that reflection the water on his chest. So that's another trick is uh, lifting. That's, you can't do that as well on the paper because this sanded paper is non-absorbent so it, it kind of just is easier to lift if you spend the time. So I'm, I'm putting water on and then wiping it on the towel. I did a little bit on the back there. Now I'm going to use some that's a chocolate color and then you know get even darker on the bottom of that wing um, and in the second here I'm going to use a white to, to uh, fill in that that neck or that white neck band because right now it's just that 
sanded paper color with the uh, that original magenta outline. So here's some kind of grayish thing. Well, no, that's a white. Um, but I really wanted to. I really like the sanded paper for this because then it's more like acrylic painting or oil painting as you can go dark on the light. But I found that you can't really use water on top of the white because it dilutes it. So I'm going to show you how I use a spray bottle to spray it and set it. Um, and that tends to, I, I found that it doesn't smear if you do that. So I just give it a couple spritz, spritzes so it doesn't run and then it sets up. So it's quite nice. So there you have it. You can get some nice results by using watercolor pencils on sanded paper. All right. I hope this art experiment inspired you to explore something in your own art practice. Be sure to watch this next video to get more ideas you can use. And remember, explore art and discover life.